Hello, and thanks for joining us for another exciting episode of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today we are talking about provisional patent applications, and we're going to cover some of the basics of how they work, and discuss situations where they work well, and cases where you may not want to use a provisional patent application. Now in the world of patents, filing dates are critical. The date which you file a patent application with the patent office is known as its filing date. And during examination, which is the phase where the patent office reviews your application to see if it can become an issued patent, during that examination, the patent office will be checking other references, such as other patents and applications, to see if they show something like what you are doing. These other references are known as prior art. Prior art is patent speak. It is a fancy way of basically saying stuff that existed before your invention. So prior art is stuff that existed before your invention. And if your filing date is before the date of a reference, then that reference generally cannot be used as prior art against your application. So the earlier you can get a filing date, the better it is for disqualifying references that could potentially go against you when it comes to attempting to get a patent on your invention. And a provisional patent can be used to establish this filing date. Also note that I said provisional patent application. There is no such thing as a provisional patent here in the United States. The provisional patent application is merely an application and its primary purpose is to secure a filing date for your invention. Here are some key features of the provisional patent application. No formal drawing requirements, so any sketches, drawings, or other photos can be submitted as part of a provisional patent application. It's generally much cheaper to file and prepare than a regular patent application. And once filed, your invention is patent pending. Now for some of the key details. It remains in effect for one year after filing, and sometime within that year, you need to file a regular application that links to your provisional Otherwise, your provisional expires and you cannot get its benefit. The operation of a provisional can be illustrated with a simple timeline example. Let's say you invent something and you file your provisional patent application in July of 2015. Then, the other guy files a patent application in December of 2015. Now, in June of 2016, you file a regular patent application for your invention. Your regular application is linked back to your provisional application. Now, provisional applications generally are not actually looked at by the patent office, so for you, the patent office would review your regular application filed in June of 2016. And they would find the other guy's regular application from December 2015. At first glance, it would appear that the other guy filed before you. But because your regular app links back to your provisional application, your effective filing date is July of 2015, predating the other guy's December 2015 filing. Now in another example, let's say you filed your regular application in August 2016. Perhaps it slipped your mind about the deadline for your provisional patent application, so by the time you filed the regular application, it was already beyond one year. Because of that, your regular application cannot link back to your provisional. And so, in this scenario, the other guy wins, because his December 2015 filing predates your regular application filing. So the moral of this story is to set a calendar reminder 10 months after your provisional filing. Why 10 months instead of 12? Because you will want to have a few weeks to get the regular patent application together and get it filed before the one-year date where your provisional application expires. At the end of the 10-month time frame, it's a good time to reevaluate the state of your invention. Take note of any improvements or new ideas or alternative methods that you have come up with since the filing of your provisional application. These improvements can be included in your regular application, but they do not get the benefit of the provisional filing date. And that is a key thing to understand. 
if I invent a pencil sharpener that has four gears and disclose it in my provisional application and then over the course of the 10 months I come up with a new design that has five gears and put that into my regular application that particular version or embodiment in patent speak is considered to have a, do a filing date of the regular application since that five gear embodiment was not shown in the provisional application which leads to the fourth and very important bullet point the provisional patent application should be as detailed as possible. It is only as good as what it shows. If it shows very little detail, it won't be of much help to you in overcoming prior art. So in general, more details equals better. In other words, we don't want to just scribble something on a cocktail napkin and send it in. However, one such exception is imminent public disclosure. In general, it is very good to have a patent application filed on your invention before any public disclosure of it. Now sometimes it happens that the inventors have scheduled a public disclosure either at a trade show, conference, sales demonstration, or, or something like that. In such a case, a quick provisional may be the best option. For example, if the idea is going to be disclosed at a conference tomorrow, you can file a provisional patent application today that simply includes your documentation, your white papers, your PowerPoint slide decks, any other written materials, the presentation that you were planning to give. It's usually better to have that as your provisional application than to not have one at all. So in that situation, consider filing a quick provisional application to establish your filing date. Now let's talk about a disadvantage of provisional patent applications. Keep in mind, it generally takes two to four years to get a patent from a regular patent application. So from the time you file the regular patent application to when you may actually get a patent, if at all, is typically two to four years. Provisional patent applications do not get examined. They only preserve a filing date, and they effectively delay the filing of the regular application by up to a year, which in turn delays is issuance of the patent by up to one year. So if your business model is relying on patent issuance, a provisional patent application may not be the best choice for you. For example, if you're a startup company and you're trying to build a patent portfolio to help increase your value, to get funding, or to get bought by a bigger company, issued patents can be very important for that. So in those cases, you may want to file regular applications to expedite patent issuance. However, note that just because you file a provisional patent application doesn't mean that you have to wait the full year to file your regular application. You can file the provisional and a month later file the regular application, in which case your delay would only be one month and not the full year. So that is something to keep in mind when deciding if a provisional patent application is right for you. Finally, let's recap with a few advantages, and these are strong advantages. It has relatively low filing and preparation costs, and since there are not many format requirements, it can be put together more quickly than a regular application. Secondly, it gives you up to a year to experiment to refine or evaluate your idea. So if, as the one-year anniversary of your provisional patent application approaches, you realize the idea is not feasible and you don't wish to pursue it, you can simply let your provisional application expire and move on to your next idea. So hopefully this helps give you some more insights on the provisional patent application and you can help make a decision if this strategy is right for your situation. Thanks again for checking out Inventor's Quick Tips and we'll see you next time.